Hello everybody and welcome to OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you guys are looking for PTC Geocodes, including the latest Chilling Rain set, make sure you head over to the Potown store where you can use code OmniPoke for an extra 5% off your order. Today, as promised, I'm going to be going through some single prize decks. Uh, this is going to be one of the last five ways to play uh, that we're going to be doing for this uh, format for now. And it's going to be five ways to play single prize decks, um, which obviously there's a lot of uh, contention as to uh, all of the negativity around VMAXs, tag teams, that kind of thing. So it's always good to uh, breathe a bit of a breath of fresh air into some archetypes with some one prize decks. And we're kicking things off with actually a really, really interesting Decidueye build. Uh, so the first deck is actually a deck that ended up winning the Limitless Invitational uh, that took place uh, this weekend. Uh, basically, it's Decidueye, uh, but with an Inteleon engine rather than some of these uh, other engines we've seen in the past. Um, quick shooting can help supplement the damage, whilst Shady Dealings on the Drizzile and Inteleon can help smooth out getting candies, uh, ball search cards, that kind of things to get uh, Decidueyes into play. Uh, so yeah, we kind of know the strategy behind Decidueye decks nowadays, it's just hope that your opponent doesn't really have any answers. Uh, and, uh, to be able to deal with this Deep Forest camo. Right now, a lot of people are omitting text for things like Decidueye, uh, so this can really capitalize on some of those uh, decks that really aren't sort of teching for the uh, matchup at all. Interestingly, because of this deck's win, it's likely that we're gonna see a bit of a rise in uh, techs, in people, in people respecting this kind of archetype. So it may not be immediately the best way to play, uh, the best single prize deck to play, but uh, this looks like it could be a very interesting new way to play Decidueye um, compared to some of the older lists that we've seen. Other than that, there's nothing too crazy uh, in the list. We've got a quite a wild support account, um, fairly low draw support accounts. I've actually made a couple of changes from the uh, list that won Limitless. I've added an extra Drizzile, an extra Sinlin, um, just to kind of hopefully smooth out those awkward turns here and there. Uh, Big Parasol is one card that I think people may be questioning. Uh, this is actually really good against Calyrex. Now Calyrex, uh, Calyrex's second attack does 50, puts five damage counters, sorry, on two of your opponent's Pokemon, uh, which would get around Deep Forest Camo. Um, so we're playing the Big Parasol to actually uh, prevent that from happening uh, so that these Calyrex decks Calyrex decks don't have an inbuilt answer anymore, which is great. So uh, that was one of the scariest things for the CGI. Uh, coming into this new meta, there was a very easy answer. Um, so having a big parasol to help out with that is going to be really useful. Uh, but yeah, other than that, a lot of ball search cards, high energy, uh, high rare candy count, some capture energies to make sure we're getting these sobbles and rowlets down in the early game uh, to be able to evolve them up and get into deciduous and then, you know, just hopefully win the game through deep forest camo. Um, and off the back of that ability alone, really. So yeah, very interesting list. Maybe the new way to play Decidueye, uh, which is pretty interesting. Next up, we have another stage two deck. We have Guardi Gallade. Uh, apologies for the awkward split of Gardevoir here. Uh, but yeah, this is an archetype that me and Joe um, were not as hyped on as some of the community and some other uh, people out there. So um, it's definitely one that is worth looking into but I don't think is um, going to be able to break the top tiers uh, but we have had well I have had some games with this and when it does set up it actually is pretty scary to be honest so um, whilst I don't think it's going to particularly crack uh, the toppest of tiers uh, definitely something to this archetype being able to shining arcana multiple times per turn drawing cards attaching energy uh, kind of similar to the Calyrex ability slightly different obviously very um, very different abilities in the way they work, but kind of has a similar effect, drawing cards, attaching energy, and that brainwave attack, hitting uh, Urshifu's for weakness is great. We've also got one of each Gallade. Uh, both of these Gallades hit great weaknesses and have great attacks, uh, as well as needing less energy uh, than the Guardi to start again in getting into some of these good numbers. So uh, yeah, really, really good to be able to um, utilize both of those. And then the only other Pokemon we're playing is Mew. Uh, basically, we tried out a couple of variants of this deck um, and just keeping things as simple as possible, high ball search counts, fairly high support count, fairly high energy count, and just going all in on these Pokemon was the best way to play this, to be honest. You can play something like a Guru to help out 
uh, with the shiny arcanas getting energy onto the top. But as you can see, right now we're playing zero switch cards because basically whatever's in the active you're probably going to be attacking with anyway. Um, and if they're trying to gust anything up, we can accelerate to basically any of our Pokemon to, to make them into an attacker if needs be. Uh, so we're not running any switch cards. If you play Gurus, you probably do have to play switch cards. Maybe you could greed it out and try and get away with it. Uh, but you can play uh, sort of a Guru engine to try and help out with the Shiny Arcanas. But yeah, do note that you have to slightly adapt the deck list uh, to accommodate for that. But yeah, like I say, other than that, four, 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 four of all of the Ball Search cards just to guarantee we can actually get these Pokemon into play. Uh, because basically you live and die on being able to Mirage Step on turn two into getting some Gardevoirs out, and even sometimes Mirage Step on 2 can be a bit awkward. Uh, it doesn't guarantee you the game or anything like it. Sometimes used to with something like Frogs. Um, like I say, the Mew, just to help out against Rapid Strike Urshi, even though we have weakness, obviously Rapid Strike can just start really punishing our, bait, uh, our bench Pokemon very quickly, uh, dealing with these Curliers um, yeah, very, very, in a very speedy manner, so being able to at least prevent that is pretty nice. With the Double Ordinary Rod, you really don't need to lean into this anymore. Uh, you should have more than enough outs to uh, dealing with Rapid Strike, especially with Weakness as well. So yeah, pretty good stuff. Um, sorry, the one thing to note about this uh, Gallade here is for two energy, you basically knock out any um, V Pokemon that you're weak that is weak to you. So any Rapid Strike Urshies uh, and any uh, Eternatuses, that kind of thing. You're straight up uh, one shotting for two energy, uh, which is really nice when maybe they're going to be playing around Dynamate Dyna Blade. Um, obviously, Eternatus can't really do that. Uh, but Rapid Strike definitely can, so uh, this this um, Gallade here gives us a bit of an out to both of those uh, situations, which is nice. Next up we have Rapid Strike Mali, another archetype that uh, has proved to be very, very popular uh, upon the set's release. It's going to be interesting to see whether this uh, cements itself as a mainstay in the meta. Um, obviously we've seen a variety of different lists, some with Cincino, We've seen some with the Rapid Strike Inteleon. We've actually gone with the Shady Dealings Inteleon because Shady Dealings can just straight up search to Rapid Strike cards. So whilst the Rapid Strike Inteleon can sort of do damage over time with that quick shooter ability, uh, this is more of a burst 80 damage with Inteleon with the upside of also being able to grab you support, uh, like supporters and ball search cards, that kind of thing. So kind of serves two purposes. It's less uh, damage across multiple turns but it's more burst damage if needs be and more consistency and in all honesty 80 damage from one Inteleon uh, will sometimes be more damage than a quick shooter would rack up through the game or equivalent of the amount of damage a quick shooter would wrap up, rack up through the game so uh, yeah we feel that the shady dealings Inteleon is actually a little bit better than the quick shooter one um, but yeah other than that there's really not too much to say obviously the full 4-4 Malamar some Heavy auxiliary counts, we've got the full Brawly and Karina's focus. There's 34 Rapid Strike cards in here, so still a fair chunk of Rapid Strikes um, to be able to actually buff this Rapid Strike Tentacles attack. Uh, and yeah, a really fun deck. I've actually seen a lot of gameplay of this, and it looks like a lot of fun um, to be able to just dish out a lot of damage out of nowhere, draw a load of cards with things like Oracorio, Karina, um, and then rack up a load of damage out of nowhere. Uh, it's pretty interesting, a lot of fun to play, so I definitely would recommend this one. Next up, we have Single Strike Box. This was an archetype we actually tested pre-release, uh, or pre-the-release of Chilling Rain, and we were pretty impressed by it, to be honest. Initially, uh, back in the day, we were playing uh, the Single Strike Urshifu, um, but now it turns out Stone Journey just does enough damage with Giga Hammer, and even Lance Pulse can be quite threatening in the early game in combination with Single Strike Energy. Um, and Karen and things like that. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, it turns out this Stone Journal is just doing enough. It's doing it, what it needs to be doing compared to um, something like an Urshifu. So we may as well just play the one prize version and stop our opponent taking two or even three prizes against us. Obviously Strong Tail uh, on the Surviper is great against all of these Calyrex decks right now, as well as just being a very, very efficient attack on a one prize Pokemon that has scalable damage with things like Karen and uh, Rapid Strike Energy, as mentioned previously. So yeah, really, really strong. We have a couple of captures to make sure the deck uh, is flowing, and then early game we can grab these Hound Hours, um, which is pretty important. Capture is basically live on all targets because all of our Pokemon have at least one colorless energy cost, so capture is never really detrimental um, to be attaching turn one to start getting into the game. Obviously, again, we're playing that Mew just to really be able to uh, not immediately lose to something like a Rapid Strike Urshifu, uh, 
uh, going ham and being able to maybe take out both of our hound hours turn two if we're going second. Uh, so yeah, we, we have to play the Mew in this case. Obviously, this is leaning more into the uh, single strike support account to be able to buff Strong Tail's damage. Uh, that's why we're not going to see any Marnies in here. It's just going to be Bruno's and Karen's Conviction. Um, and then along with the sort of single strike package, we've got the four urns, the couple of lanterns, and uh, a couple of Tower of Darkness to be able to churn through the deck uh, and hopefully draw into these pieces. Uh, I actually think this could be a very, very strong deck in the meta. We haven't really seen anyone uh, toying with it too much in this first week or so of tournaments. Uh, but I think if left unchecked, this actually could be a really, really interesting archetype. Having weakness on two great Pokemon, as well as just raw damage output to be able to KO non-evolving Vs and that kind of thing, um, is actually really, really scary. So I think this could be a bit of a sleeper pick right now, and uh, I'm definitely interested to try it out in some of the upcoming uh, Chilling Rain tournaments. Finally, we have a really fun one. We have Cinderace. Now, obviously, the new Crisis Power Cinderace is... Uh, one of the big buffs for the deck, Crisis Power, uh, being an insane late game swing card, uh, 30 more damage for each prize card your opponent has taken. That in combination with Karen basically is 50 more damage for each prize your opponent has taken, uh, and Fireball Shot is already doing 2 for 150. So it, they only need to take 4 prizes to be able to be, uh, for us to be doing 350 damage to uh, basically knock out any V max Pokemon, which is crazy. So all of a sudden, Cinderace actually had some very, very minimal success in the previous format. Um, now it moves more towards a two-shotting a VMAX uh, with with the Flare Striker Libero Cinderace, uh, this 190 attack in the early game, just slowly two-shotting through, letting our opponent take some prizes on us, and then coming in with a Crisis Power Cinderace, dropping that Karen down and just being able to go, bang, I've done 350 damage and I've won the game. Obviously, um, against things like ADP and stuff, it can be a little bit awkward because they're taking multiple prizes. Uh, we do have to play the Mew so that Rapid Strike can't be doing that against us. Again, we're playing the Double Ordinary Rod count to really lean into the a lot of these one-off Pokemon. Uh, you can see that it's kind of a similar sort of uh, engine to that Rapid Strike uh, Urshifu list that we've, we took a look at yesterday and that has done well. Uh, early game Snorlax and Jirachis, mid game Sinsinos, whilst we power up our attackers. Uh, and yeah, like I say, the plan is to sort of churn through a couple of basically two or three prizes, or sorry, three or four prizes worth um, of Pokemon with Flare Strike, uh, Flare Striker, and then using Fireball Shot on the Crisis Power one to close out the game, sort of out of nowhere. You you know you can go from having a Scorbunny with a Fire Energy attached to all of a sudden doing 350 damage um, in the space of a turn, which is pretty crazy. Uh, so yeah, nothing crazy to look at in this list. Other than that, uh, the support count is a bit wild. We have to accommodate for a lot of different things, but again. Uh, we've seen this kind of Cincino support engine work before where you're running some of these more uh, or less aggressive draw supporters compared to Research uh, to and just kind of really leaning into Snorlax and Jirachi in the early game uh, until you can establish Cincinos, at which point you don't need to be doing this raw, these raw draw sevens with Research. You can just supplement them with things like Bird Keeper and stuff. Um, so yeah, a really interesting deck, one that I think uh, it definitely is a lot of fun to play. And... Um, honestly, like I say, the uh, raw aggression from Crisis Power out of nowhere uh, can be pretty scary, especially for some VMAX decks, uh, in terms of not kind of just ignoring, a, like I say, a random Scorbunny on the bench with a fire energy. All of a sudden, Crisis Power is taking three prizes and the game is over. So yeah, definitely uh, give this one a go. I think it could prove uh, a bit of a challenge for some of the VMAX and even tag team decks out there uh, if they don't really expect this Crisis Power. Um, which, again, it hasn't been really been toyed around with too much yet, so definitely going to be an interesting one to mess around with and see if you can crack some of those tournaments with. Uh, but yeah, other than that, these were some single prize decks uh, that I think are worth taking a look at in the new Chilling Rain meta. All five of these I actually think are really, really strong um, sort of anti-meta picks, at least. Um, and if nothing else, they are a lot of fun to play. And with the kind of one prize decks... You always have that little feeling of extra gratification when you are able to win against something like an ADP or an Eternatus or a Rapid Strike Urshifu that has just been doing so well over the past six months. There's always that little bit of uh, excitement when you're able to win with a one prize deck. So definitely good for the serotonin as well. Uh, but yeah, have, a, have some fun with these five lists. Let us know what your favorite one prize deck is down in the comments. Uh, below and other than that i've been jack from omnipoke i look forward to seeing you guys in another video thanks everyone